Hello, America. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my review of Love After Lockup Season 2, Episode 50. Um, I did not watch this on my TV. I watched it on another form of watching things. So if I'm missing anything, it's because I didn't get up and watch it on my TV. I have a TV like right behind in my room. But my TV in my room does not have Philo, and I usually watch it on Philo, so I just said forget it, and we don't need to talk about nothing else. Okay, so I haven't put up new earrings or anything. Um, right now, I'm in the process of working, you know. Usually, I, I just be working. Well, I work almost every day, but, like, I'm in the process of trying to make the big bucks. So, um, I promise by next week I'll have things. I'm going to have new things. I'm going to have fancy things. I'm going to have beautiful, wonderful things. All the things that you can think of, I want to have. Okay. So let's, let's get started. Can I find my notes? Yes, I can. Okay. So let's talk about Amber and Vince. We don't see Vince. Um, basically what we see is a continuation of last week. Puppy's mother, Kathy, comes down. My ring is someplace on this damn floor, and I don't like that. Anyway, puppy, uh, Kathy comes down to talk to Amber after she heard her on the phone with Puppy. So, you know, Amber is like, I mean, I wasn't supposed to tell nobody, but, you know, I'm going to tell Kathy because I feel like I'm just not able to do it. So she tells her, you know, what the plan was, and... Um, he, she was basically just going to marry Vince or adopt, or Vince was going to adopt her so he could get extra benefits, but then it turned out he didn't get the extra benefits, so I guess, um, she was going to marry him, so then she could tap into his benefits, and then Puppy and Amber's mother, who doesn't have a name, it's just mom, would, uh, but she ain't none of my mom, um, that's sound real old. Um, you know, they would have a, a cushy cushion once they got out of prison because Amber said she didn't have any financial help while she was in the clink and, you know, in the clink, in the slammer. And, you know, she needs it. Um, Amber then says, while she's talking to the camera, we never meant to convince. And I'm like, You never meant to con Vince, but you, so you meant to run game on him, but you didn't mean to con him. I'm really confused. What does that mean? We didn't mean to con him, but y'all trying to con him. So like, what what are you talking about? Anyway, um, she says we wasn't trying to con him, and she didn't know that it would be this bad, like being with Vince, that it would be this horrible. And Kathy is like, well, look, let me tell you something. You in the real world now, and I know y'all need money and stuff while y'all in there, but you in the real world now, and people don't really take too kindly to you messing with their feelings, and you see Vince and his crazy eyes, he might, you know, he might be worse than being in prison, to be quite honest. You see them crazy eyes? She didn't say that, but she should have said that. Anyway, um, Amber is between a rock and a hard place because she's supposed to take uh, Vince to meet her family up in Indiana and she already told her family that she was coming with him she already told him that he could come and she doesn't want her family to be disappointed in her to know that you know she doing some nefarious shit okay and um Amber says that she wanted the plan to be real, but it's just so hard. Girl, why did they let, why did they think that the full-blown lesbian, not the, not, it seems like maybe puppy could do it. Maybe puppy is bisexual. Why did you think the full-blown lesbian would be able to come out here and suck some peen? That makes no sense. That makes no sense. She don't look like the peen sucking type. And then you gonna come out here and tell me, hey, just suck a little peen, it'll be fine. No, no, she's disgusting. Okay. Anyway, that's the end of their story. It was real quick. Let's talk about Alex. 
um, Alex and his friend, whose name is Coda, they are going to meet Glorietta and Coda's wife, who is Dawn. <sighs> Coda is like, you know, I'm not really good at keeping secrets. Basically, it seemed like he ready to spill the beans about Alex meeting Glor meeting Juliana. So they get to the place. Dawn and Gloriata, Gloriata, Glorietta are already there. Um, Dawn says that she knows about what was going on. I need to water my cactus. Not a cactus. What's it called? My aloe vera plant. Y'all, it is not in good shape at all. I ain't did nothing. Mm, I'm sorry. Anyway, Dawn says that she knows because Coda told her that Alex met with Juliana, so she feels like a bad person because she's withholding this information. So they get some fish tacos, and y'all, let me tell you something. About two days ago, me and my friend went to this place that I be, like, getting Uber orders from, but I never went in there. I got no food, right? We got street tacos. I got a shrimp street taco, a fish street taco, and a... uh a chicken one, right? Oh my gosh. And they got like this little, you know, toppings bar where you put on the top. And so I put me on some pico because mm, I love me some pico. A little bit of lettuce, you know, a little bit of lime, a mm, little bit of sour cream, but just on the, on the chicken one. When I tell you that shrimp was hitting, it's hitting to the point where I'm thinking about it. Okay. And the taco was only like, uh, range from like two seventy five to like four dollars for the shrimp one, bro. When I tell you, I'm ready to go back, and it's really not that far. It's literally maybe like a ten minute drive. So I'm thinking next week, and I had a margarita. I'm I'm sorry, yeah, no, I had a daiquiri, a pina colada daiquiri, and it came in this big ass glass, y'all. When I tell you, I was living, okay, and it was all under twenty dollars. Anyway, I'm sorry, but let me tell you something. It was good. Anyway, so they get fish tacos. Coda then asks her, well, how soon do you all want to get married? And then Glorietta is like, we need to pick food for the wedding. And I was like, did you not hear him? And then Kato is like, well, y'all, that's the last thing y'all need to be worried about. Y'all need to, you know, be trying to be with one another and working on stuff before y'all get married and get a house and blah, blah, blah. And Alex says something to her, but the, the, the thing that I was watching cut out, cut out. So I didn't hear what he said. If you know what he said, please leave it in the comments section below for me. Anyway, um... She said that she felt like she was being put on the spot. She felt like Alex was trying to argue with her. She felt, because then Alex was like, what do you really love about me? How you care about me? And Dawn and Coda got up and went to go smoke a cigarette. Glorietta was like, why the hell you want to know why I love you now, huh? I thought this was Valentine's Day. Why are you acting like this? Like, you acting weird. And Alex is like, you know what? Let me just go smoke a cigarette. She said, yeah, go do what you do best. And I said, what? Suck it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, that just came to me immediately. Excuse me. Um. Anyway, then Alex got the nerve to say in his confessional, I just don't know. You know, it seemed like Gloriette is a little bit, um, what's the word? Shallow. Like, you know, she only loved me for my tattoos. And I'm like, what, the two tattoos of drippingness that you got right here? Okay. Anyway, that was the end of their story. I thought that they was going to show more, but they didn't. So I'm pretty sure that when they supposed to show more. Girl, I don't know. Maybe I missed a whole. Maybe I should watch it on my TV. But guess who's gonna ain't gonna do that? Me. So we see Lizzie. Lizzie smoking a damn cigarette as she walking into the house. And the only reason why I'm calling her out on smoking that cigarette, because as soon as they got back in the car when she was blindfolded, she was like, "Let me light up another one." I'm like, mm, I ain't gonna say what I was gonna say. Anyway, so. She comes in the house. She like, what's up, Daniel? Daniel's like, what's up? I need you to do something for me. She like, what? He's like, I need you to pack a bag. You're going to end up saying where I'm at. I'm sorry. Um, 
<laughs> my my past checkered like the Louis I just got. What is that? Married in a twenty man. What a fun in that. Um, that's a Drake song. Excuse me. Sorry. Anyway, she said you need. He said you need to pack a bag and I need to drive your car. I said, how are these felons driving cars? This is some illegalness going on because I wish a felon would try to drive my car. I wish somebody without a damn license would try to drive my damn car. I'm I'm shutting it down. Anyway, Lizzie goes, gets her bag. She's really, you know, first of all, she doesn't like to not know what's going on. So she's like, what are we doing? He's like, don't worry about it. I'm a blindfold you. So he blindfolds her. They're in the car. She's like, let me light this cigarette. I'm like, girl, you can't damn wait. Like, is the cigarette that deep? Is that deep that you need it? Like, you craving it? Like, okay, whatever. Anyway, they go to this place. I thought they, I thought he was taking her to the um, what is it called? The uh, the 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 court, you know, to get the marriage license. No, he's taking her to some place called Destination Inn. Takes her to this room. Um, it is a Paris themed room because she's always wanted to go to Paris. So she says that it's beautiful. Um, is it beautiful? I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out if my husband took me to a Paris themed room, would I be happy? I don't know. I'm feeling like no, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so she's happy. The Eiffel Tower is there. It's not even the Eiffel Tower. It's just half of it. And I guess it's the shower, which was really cool. And the bed looked really old and Victorian-like. And I'm like, y'all just gonna lay on that bed. Ain't nobody bring no disinfectant spray. Ain't nobody. Anyway, so... You know, they, um, they're they there. She's happy. She's like, oh, my gosh, Daniel, I love you. And she's like, I love you. Daniel's like, I love you. Then he's like, I have something that I need to ask. And he's like, hey, will you marry me? And pulls out the little bitty ass ring. And she says yes. And they're happy. He does not, he does not know how he will tell his mother that it was not a promise ring. That it was an engagement ring. He's pretty sure that his mother will slap him in the face. But it's up to him to prove that he is ready for marriage and a changed man so bada bing bada boom moving on y'all why in the hell is and anyway angela and tommy are on their way to pick up tony um she says she's ready to let him back in only if he tells her the truth about the other woman. She says she's ready to... Oh, I had my hair in a braid. I guess it's not going to work, huh? She says that um, she's ready to hug and kiss him. But she also doesn't want Tommy to tell her... Tell him, Tony, that Tommy proposed to Angela. And to Tommy said, what the hell you think I am? I'm just going to walk out and be like, hey, you know I proposed to her. You know what? What the hell is wrong with Tommy? Because I don't, I'm, I know that we friends and everything, so I guess he's just doing that for a friend. But I really can't be around you, especially after I told your dumb ass I loved you and I wanted to be with you and that I had $600,000 in the bank and we could go to Jamaica. I said, what? You got what? Huh? They paying therapists like that? Okay. Let me tell you something. Um, what's your name? Uh, Tony, fuck you. Tommy, let's go. I know money isn't everything, but money is something, okay? Anyway, so Tommy says that he's glad that he's going with her because he wants to grill Tony and, you know, he'll always be there for Angela. So as they're waiting for him, Angela is like, you know, I'm so happy to see him. I'm so ready to see him. You know, then we'll we'll get to have sex. And you see, every time she talks about Tony, she always is talking about the physical, the physicalness. And I'm like, girl, you just trying to get some D. They don't have, ain't nobody else walking around with no D. If you really want the D, then just get D from somebody. Because it seems like 
maybe once she gets some D, she'll be okay. Because it's just like, I can't wait to have sex. Girl, anyway. So Tommy come out. His face is fat. Fat, fat face Tony come out. And they hugging and kissing. And I'm like, what happened to you, you know, wanting to know about the person? I wouldn't have hugged nor kiss a nigga. And I know you was talking to Michael or Michelle, whoever you was talking to. While you was, anyway. So, Tony says that he'll do things differently, you know, for Angela. And Angela says, no, I don't want you to do things differently for me. I want you to do things differently for yourself. He says, okay, and you know, I love you as much as I love myself. And I said, is that something I should be proud of? as i don't know okay 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 anyway so then tony says he digs older women because they can they can give him guidance and i said so you need a mama angela aren't you a mental health therapist shouldn't you know that this man is suffering and he needs my he got mommy issues you you need some guidance i ain't your gd mama but Angela is. Anyway, so they get in the car. Tommy says in his confessional, he thought that Tony was going to look tough, but he don't. <laughs> they get in the car. They put, they put to, uh, Tommy's ass in the back seat. Tommy said, hey, okay, so you ever killed somebody? He says, I'm not going to discuss this right now. So do that mean he has? Because if he hasn't, wouldn't he have just said no? If somebody walks up to you and say, hey, have you ever killed someone? Would you say, I don't want to talk about this? Or would you say no? That's all I want to know. Anyway, uh, Tommy also says, um, well, you know, how do you love somebody that you ain't never met? Tony says, we've developed a deep connection. So, Angela is like, I'm hungry. Let's go to a restaurant. They go to a restaurant, all three of them. Tony says, let me get a steak. I said, here we go with that damn steak again. You're going to take him to the halfway house again, and he's going to be right on out of your life, just like the last time. So... Um, Tony says, I, I can't remember what Tommy asked him, but Tony was like, you know, I was a little bit desperate when I wrote Angela because I wrote eight to 10 other women and they would be making donations. And so, you know, I lived off that for a minute. Well, what else? You, you ain't got nothing to do. What you mean? You lived off of it. Anyway, um, Tommy says he's a little bit confused because, you know, you say you love Angela all like that, but like when you came out, she was chasing after somebody else and I just need an answer then Tony says well you know I do have to do a little bit of soul searching and I'm like what the fuck what what Angela you really got the veil over your eyes don't you what you mean what you got to do a little bit of soul searching what does that mean why did you go and be and try to be with another woman well you know I got to do a little bit of, or another person well, I got to do a little bit of soul searching. Okay. Anyway, so um, Tommy says that he thinks he's running a hustle. He's been running a hustle his whole life. And he's more nervous for Angela now than he was when Tony was in jail. Then Angela is like, yeah, you know, you're right. He do, he, he do seem like, you know, based on his history, that he is running a hustle, although I don't know that for sure. And at that moment, if I was Tommy, I would have taken my shit and got up and left. Girl, you are absolutely, oh, gosh, she ain't even dickmatized. She just matized. Anyway, um, Tony says he doesn't understand why people don't, don't don't get that he loves her anyway um then i talk about everybody because you know who we about to talk about shane john and sean and Lacey. okay because everybody keeps saying she called john sean i haven't heard it personally but i ain't gonna argue with everybody so if she calls john sean then shane sean john and Lacey. okay 
Sean John. <laughs> so we see the continuation. Shane comes, they kissing each other. I don't know, Lacey's lips look wet for some reason. You know, have you ever met somebody or seen somebody where their lips look wet? Or they look like they need to swallow because they got a lot of substances in them substances. They got a lot of spit in their mouth. That's how Lacey looks to me. I know it's just her lips, but she just look like she need to... Just, you know, give a good wipe. Like if like like you need a napkin and you just need to wipe your lips. Anyway, Shane comes, they kissing each other in front of John. John says in his confessional that you can tell that Shane is a puppy dog and he just gonna follow Lacey wherever. And of course that's what Lacey wants. Then John is like, Ugh, look at that man's teeth. John is making fun of Shane. Shane, John or Sean. Sean John is making fun of Shane. Lacey gets mad. Lacey's like, don't make fun of him. And then she hits him. Now, girl, you better be glad that I just got out of prison. Because I would have hit you with that one-two combo and fuck that nigga teeth up some more, okay? Anyway, she takes his phone. And I'm like, why are you taking his phone? He like, give me back my phone, bitch. <laughs> Shane is over there doing nothing. Um, Lacey is talking about she'll call his parole officer and she's like, stop fucking talking about him. <sighs> Sean John says that um, she'll get tired of him just like she gets tired of every other man and she'll either start cheating on him or abusing him. And I'm like, well, she had to be cheating on her first husband with John, Sean John, because there is a possibility that her son is his son. And she had, she was cheating on Sean John with Shane. So Shane, wait till you turn about 30. She going to be like, yikes, and get her another one. Anyway, um, Sean John said that she'll start to either cheat on him or abuse him. And, you know, she'll be lying and saying she's going to get her nails done and she'll probably be at the hotel with me. And I was like, ooh, Sean John, you are absolutely wrong for that. So Lacey and Shane go home. Lacey says that she's more in love with Shane because of how he handled himself in that situation. Because, like, he's on parole and, like, he was just very, very calm and he took the high road. Okay, anyway, she says that um, John, Sean John looked like the dumbass. Okay, and now Lacey knows without a shadow of a doubt. Is that it? A sliver of a shadow of a doubt, right? Y'all don't know. I'm, I don't know. Um, she says that she knows that she wants to spend the rest of her life with Shane. She's like, can I have my ring back? He's like, oh, just so happy I have it right here. He pulls it out. He's like, Lacey, will you marry me? What was Lizzie? Lizzie's name is Elizabeth Victoria. I said, I don't like that at all. Um, Lizzie, I'm sorry. Shane is like, hey, Lacey, will you marry me? I love you. I guess that proposal was good enough for her, huh? She's like, yes. And then they kiss. And the episode is off. Oh, but she then says, if Marla is Sean John's child, then, like, we're still going to have to deal with him forever. So, that's it. That's the end of this fucking episode. I wish it was kind of the end of the season because I'm kind of sick of this shit. Um... I'm going to put it in the comments because I don't know who's watching at the end of the video. If you are watching at the end of the video, then if y'all have shows that y'all want me to watch, I could have reviewed Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I don't have Bravo, and I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, I could have reviewed it, but I can't. I can, but I can't, but I can't. So if y'all have any shows that y'all want me to review, please let me know anything that's coming on. Maybe family or fiance will come back. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but yeah, if y'all have any shows that's coming on and y'all want me to review, please let me know. Um, I will be coming out with a video after American Horror Story goes off because I do want to rank my American Horror Stories. If y'all like American Horror Story, let me know. 
Um, also, tell me what y'all think about this episode. It's trash. This show, it's not getting me. You know, it's not making me say, woo, like it was last season, or this first season. Uh, the season two little one anyway if y'all like this review you can like comment and subscribe you can follow me on instagram twitter everything else you need to know about me will be down below my name is brielle i make beats i sing songs if you like what you see come on along bye <laughs>